is merely on the basis of his outward behavior. Isn't it true that it's by their fruits he shall know them? Yeah. According to Matthew 7, 16, yes. But it's also true that by their roots you shall understand and not judge them. Mm -hmm. and it is important for uh, us to have uh, Christian counselors. You understand? That people that has the gift of discernment, mm -hmm. uh, filled with the Holy Ghost and wisdom, that can take a deeper look into the issues uh, that we have as Christians uh, that might keep us back uh, from spending eternity with God. We must also understand that salvation does not give instant emotional health. It offers us an important insight into the doctrine of sanctification, which is progressive. Amen? Amen. There are certain areas of our lives that need special healing by the Holy Spirit because they are not subject to ordinary prayer, mm -hmm. discipline, and willpower. They need a special kind of understanding and unlearning of past wrong programming and a relearning and reprogramming a transformation the Bible calls the renewing of our minds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is not done overnight. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? There are Christians that exhibit a ferocious anger and rage, jealousy, disillusionment, hopelessness, and unexplained outbursts, and, and, and um, bad behavior, trivial things. Mm -hmm. You just have to pull the right trigger, and there they go. Mm -hmm. Amen? It is easy to say they have a contrary spirit. Or mm -hmm. My mother used to say, that person have a bad spirit not realizing that they are unsuccessfully struggling with an emotionally rooted problem which they feel guilty about. Yeah. I was speaking, and I'm sure I shared this with you some time before, with a young lady who was trying to join our church in, uh, um, in Connecticut, and the Lord said to me, nobody likes her. <laughs> Well, of course, I'm trying to figure out why nobody likes her. Mm -hmm. So she was trying to make up for her feeling of unworthiness, inferiority, anxiety, inadequacy by having a superior know-it-all attitude. Mm -hmm. She was very disrespectful in the way she talked to people. Amen? On the job, in church, wherever she goes. Mm -hmm. Nobody liked her. Now what happens to this kind of person when he or she becomes a Christian? Part of his or her mind believes in God's love, accepts God's forgiveness, and feels at peace for a while. Then all of a sudden everything within him or her rises to the top and begins to overwhelm them. Amen? What has happened? The good news of the gospel has not penetrated deep down into his or her damaged inner self, which also needs to be evangelized. The deep inner scars must be touched and healed by the balm of Gilead. The soul is fragmented by deep emotional scars. Mm -hmm. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now, the definition of the law of impact says, as a result of harmful treatment inflicted on a person by someone else, whether the person is, is an acquaintance or stranger, the abuse is likely to suffer emotional trauma either immediately or later in life. Such abuse is transferable, cynical, and will most likely continue into many relationships or offsprings 
and some abuse may be even self-afflicted. Amen. So the word simply means the abnormal or wrong use of something or someone and any time it occurs, normal life is significantly affected. And many times people when they have gone through trauma at a certain age, they do not mature beyond that age. If that trauma occurred when they were six years old, they could be 35 and you're still dealing with a six-year-old child. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. The trauma happened at 17. That's a 40-year-old man mm -hmm. still operating like a 17-year-old teenager because they were traumatized. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? At that point in their life. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, uh, as a result of that, you know, Satan likes to take advantage yeah. of every opportunity. Yeah. Amen? Amen? To bring a human soul into bondage. Yes. And as a result of these things, spiritual doors are likely to open, inviting evil spirits because that's what that's what they do mm -hmm. to exploit the unstable condition this is an unstable human being and we're going to take advantage of this person i was listening to a man of god he is in a deliverance ministry and he said today most of the deliverance he has to do is within the church among Christians. Hmm. He says there are demons that are coming up from hell today, being released in the earth. They're not going after the unsaved. They're going after Christians. Because there are doors, spiritual doors, that are open in their life. Hmm. Hmm. Amen? that they are unaware of. Mm -hmm. They are unstable in their walk with God. And so these demons uh, are exploiting their condition. He said God sent him to a church. He didn't go there to preach. He went there to help the pastor with deliverance. And the person that spoke was uh, the assistant to the pastor. Amen? And he spoke a message and so on, and the church received that praise the Lord, hallelujah. And then the pastor was about to start deliverance, and the Lord told him, get that man who just preached that word, uh -huh. and lay hands on him and cast that evil spirit out of him. The a pastor was so shocked that here is his right-hand man, and he didn't even know that the man had an evil spirit in him. In church, he's one way. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Outside of church, he can't keep his eyes off a woman. Mm -hmm. Amen? A woman eyes. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so what happened? A spirit of lust mm -hmm. entered into him. Mm -hmm. And he's there preaching the word and carrying on his duties in church. But that spirit of lust is in him. Mm -hmm. Amen? And that man of God, he says, God is sending him into Christian churches today to cast demons out of Christians yes. from the pulpit to the pew. Yes. Hallelujah to yes. Jesus. Because uh, we are not living in a time where people uh, uh, seem uh, not, not to <coughs> understand that without holiness. Yes. No man shall see God. Glory. And that you, you can do what you want to do and the pastor can't see you, but God and the but devil is seeing you God all the time. Yes. Yes. And the devil is waiting on any opportunity yes. he has. He is, uh, he is possessing Christians today because he wants to take all of them to hell with him. Yes. Amen? 
that's how he's coming against the church. And he said today, uh, it's not like long ago where you could lay hands and rebuke the spirit and this word is coming out. He said the demons today that are coming into the church and possessing Christians, he says, you have to have a special grace from God, like how uh, the apostle uh, Paul, he had to have a special grace and a special an anointing to go into Asia. He said, those demons, uh, uh, they're so terrible uh -huh. that um, you have to have that anointing yes. to cast those things out of Christian people because, number one, the Christian don't believe they have a demon. Right. Amen? And they will resist and resist. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Now, there are some issues that can be found in the rotten roots of the human soul. And one of them is anger. Anger is one of the negative fruits resulting from abuse. But the Bible said that we can be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on our rot. But anger can escalate to rage and murder, retaliation, and revenge. Some people can be angry with you for years and you don't know this person is angry with you. You see? And another thing, um, we have Christians that suffer from an inferiority complex or shame. This often stems from being constantly talked down to and bullied by parents, guardians, or other authority figures. Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem is closely related to an inferiority complex, mm -hmm. Ver verbally abusing uh, a person, and uh, these people are usually afraid to use their initiative lest they blunder and have to face rebuke again. So we have to be careful when we uh, deal with our children not to um, make them have a low self-esteem or an inferiority complex that they're afraid to take the initiative because if they make a mistake, mm -hmm. the treatment coming from the parents will be so harsh. Mm -hmm. Amen? And, and because of this, uh, um, often non-achievers, they, they may initiate projects, but will often feel that such projects will not never succeed and will abandon them after a while because it, it was so embedded in their psyche. So embedded in their psyche is the thought that a person of low self-esteem will never achieve anything or amount to anything of worth. So ironically, a person of low self-esteem may not necessarily be withdrawn or, or sad looking in public places. Amen? Mm -hmm. They might be able to hold a, a good conversation with you and so on. But you know, uh, people put on these masks. Uh, are you, they are defense mechanism in attempt to cover up the inner pain. Mm -hmm. Amen? And sometimes they just talk too much. Mm -hmm. Amen? Or they have a, a nervous smile, but deep down in their psyche is a badly injured individual who is yearning for genuine uh, attention and love. And we have bitterness. Verbal abuse will often cause or create anger and roots of bitterness within its victims. It, it shows up in the crude an abrupt way in which that person speaks to others or, or in his frequent uh, outbursts in the home or in public places. Sometimes many word expressions, uh, tone of voice or body language uh, that reminds the person about the past, 
could trigger, trigger off anger or rage, regardless of who is saying it to him. This rage and aggression tend to cloud the full understanding of what is being communicated to him, resulting in irrational behavior. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then there is the people that are super sensitive. Mm -hmm. And there, this is another kind of damaged emotions. Mm -hmm. Super sensitivity. The super sensitive person has usually been deeply hurt, mm -hmm. abandoned, rejected, emotional, um, suffer from emotional and physical abuse. As a child or even in their adult life, they may have reached out for love, approval, and affection, but instead they got the opposite. And they have scars deep inside of them. Sometimes he or she sees things other people don't see and tend to feel that, uh, uh, tend to feel things other people don't feel. You say, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Super sensitive people are usually insecure and will accuse people of things that are unfounded because they want attention mm -hmm. or they will try to sabotage a person's relationship with a friend because they want that relationship and attention all for themselves. Uh, these people always want appreciation, affirmation, and, and super sensitive people always feel somebody's talking about them. Mm -hmm. Amen? They need a lot of approval, and you can never quite give them enough. Mm -hmm. They are me-centered, me, 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 and sometimes they seem to be insensitive to other people because they are only thinking about themselves. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to try to please them. You have to be careful with what you say around them. You have to be careful that you don't make them mad. You've got to have patience to have a relationship with a super sensitive person because they have been hurt so badly that instead of becoming compassionate to others, they cover their hurt by being hard and tough. Trying to have a relationship with a super sensitive person is a lot of work. And except it is an assignment from God, mm -hmm. you will do your best if you have, if your words to them are few. Mm -hmm. Because they want to, everybody, to prove to everybody that they are articulate, intelligent, capable, so they spend their lives trying to impress others. They use money, authority, or position or even sex to have their own way. Mm. Many of them marry and divorce numerous times, not, think, not understanding it is not their spouse that has the problem. It is their controlling and manipulating ways that keep them from having a good relationship with anybody. Many spouses in Christian homes that are married to the super sensitive try to keep the peace by giving in to the demands of the controlling spouse even if they are unhappy in the marriage. They still try to keep the peace and pretend to the world that they are blessed without stress, mm. pretending to be highly favored by God and living a life of victory, lying to themselves and to everybody else. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Then you have the fearful. Mm. Another group of Christians are the fearful. Mm -hmm. Those that live with fears. The greatest fear of all is the fear of failure mm -hmm. because they have to impress people. They want to live above their means because they are so afraid of losing at the game of life that they have a, um, they have a simple way out. Never get into the game. Mm. Just sit on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. Don't try. Amen? Don't try to achieve anything. They are good at criticizing those that are in the game of life, investing their skills and their talents. But they complain about everything. It is hard for them to live by faith. Discipline is difficult. 
They are devastated when corrected. Believing is a risk. They are always ready to compromise. They are afraid to make a decision. Everything is always wrong. The time is never right. They have to get permission and they are full of excuses. They are afraid to take on responsibilities because they are full of the fear of failing. Mm. The fearful are the defeated and the indecisive in this world. Amen? Amen. I had the, I don't, I don't want to say pleasure, <laughs> but I am, have listened to a lot of women who thought that they needed to talk to me about things that have happened in their personal life as a child and even as an adult. I was ministering at a place and after there's a young lady there in the service and the next day I was coming from somewhere I went, I was coming home and I saw her walking up the street going to the house where I was staying. And um, I, I wasn't expecting her. But when she got there and so on, we sat down and I said, well, what can I do for you? She says, I just need to talk to you. I said, okay. She says, since I was a little girl, until I was 18 years old. No, she didn't start with that. She said, I don't know what is wrong with me. I am in church, I'm serving the Lord, I'm singing, I'm praising the Lord, but as soon um, an unsafe man comes from the world, he comes in the church and he'll always take me away from the church and I, I will go away with him. Then I'll get pregnant and then he will leave me alone. And I come back in church again, and she says, a cycle that goes on in my life. <coughs> a cycle. And I, I listened, and I said to her, what kind of relationship do you have with your father? When I said so, she opened her eyes real big, and I saw an expression come on her face and I knew I had hit it right there. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything else. I just waited for her response. I waited and I waited until finally she said to me, from the time I was 11 years old, I have been having sex with my father. And my first child is for my father. She says, and I left home, I left the child with my mother, <coughs> and this has been, this abuse has been repeated in my life over and over and over. And today I came here, I have to tell somebody about it because you know what, I'm pregnant again, and the man has already left me. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because Americans, I'm talking about Americans. Amen? If you study the outside world, many people in the outside world, women are not as immoral as American women. So you have to think about, you have to put sexual immorality in it mm -hmm. because it's part of the culture. Yes. It's even part of the church. There you go. Yeah. Amen? Because Americans have been weaned on indiscipline, indecency, sensuality. We are living in a modern church called Corinth. Mm. Amen? Yeah. In our society, it is very difficult for anyone to grow to a young adult without suffering some damage in the sex department of his or her personality. 
It is a culture given to sexual immorality which defaces the image of God in us because it's a sin against the body which is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen? It's a defilement of yes. the body. Yes. Amen? Yes. And this is why Satan is so aggressive yes. in this area for yes. Christians to fall due to immorality. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because sexual sins are committed with the body, with God's temple. And when the Apostle Paul wrote to the first epistle of the Corinthians, he dealt with every imaginable kind of human problem. And some of them, uh, it's almost imaginable. But he talked about quarrels, party splits, court cases, property disputes, various kinds of sexual difficulties from incest to prostitution. He talked about pre-marital relationships, marital relations, post-marital relations. He wrote about widowhood, divorce, mm -hmm. getting drunk at the communion table, uh -huh. speaking in tongues, death and funerals, and taking up offerings. Yeah. Amen. And the church today is less like the Corinthian church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of secrets, mm -hmm. dark secrets in the church. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hidden in the lives of people who were sexually abused like this young lady by relatives and fathers and brothers and uncles and neighbors, family, friends. I tell people, you look at TV and you see how many angry women they are on television today. Mm -hmm. They always want to fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't have a conversation with them. They're in your face. They want to fight. Mm -hmm. What is the underlying cause of all this anger and mayhem? And you see the way they're dressed with the, the phony hair mm -hmm. and all the nails and, and everybody's looking beautiful on the outside, but mm -hmm. inside they are a mess. There you go. Yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. Many of these uh, women and young men uh, who were sexually abused in their home, uh, they were forced into living promiscuous lifestyle because of molestation. Mm -hmm. Some were molested even in the church. Mm -hmm. Amen? And now they live with guilt and shame because their psyche was badly damaged. And when they came to Christ, mm. hallelujah, people tell them you have to be born again, but they have some issues there yes. that they have to recognize, mm. right. identified mm. before the image of God can be rebuilt in them. Yes. The Holy Spirit has to root up the old foundation and build a a new a foundation in their lives. That's why 2 Corinthians 15, 7 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he is a new creature, yes. a oh, new creation. Yes. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, amen. Some of the consequences of verbal abuse, talking down to our children, mm -hmm. belittling the person's character and deeply wounding their psyche. Ultimately, our children will have a personality, their personality, low self-esteem, mm -hmm development issues, mm -hmm. lifestyle and general deportment will be greatly affected. People say words are wind, but blows are unkind. This is an accurate assessment of life. Abusive words have destroyed more lives than the spanking of a child, for words may not create a, a the spanking of a child may not create any significant impact to the vulnerable um, young mind, but words can be very traumatic and destructive. Wow, wow. 
many parents lace their verbal communication with four letter explicits accompanied by harsh threatening tones, some expressions uh, even belittle and create disrespect for either parents. Some fathers curse at their own wives in front of the children, the children's mother, in a senseless venting of their feelings. Mm. Um, then the, tri the child grew up, by the time it's time to go to school, uh, they have a vocabulary of obscene words uh, that they use when they go to school. Uh, mm -hmm. Amen? Uh, these remarks used habitually, uh, they create a culture of foul language, uh, corrupting the home uh, and, and very social, the very social environment in which the family dwells. Amen? You can't be using uh, uh, these uh, um, obscene uh, verbal communication in the homes uh, and, and um, uh, using it against children. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Because you are venting your feelings because they make you mad. Creating an atmosphere where foul language uh, is the norm in the home. Everybody cussing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. The children don't know any different. They go to school and they're cussing too. Mm -hmm. And then the, the principal have to send a note to the, to the, the parent uh, to come and see about your cussing child. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? 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 Amen. And a, a lot of these young kids today, um, I worked in, a, in, a, in the, the state had a, a school. They call it a school, but it's really a prison. Um, for these kids and they will come there and they will give them classroom assignments and so on but these kids were so delinquent you know why their parents were in jail mm. Mm. they were living with grandparents and so on but there was such a lack of discipline in their life they will run away from the school and go into um, stores and steal mm -hmm. and one day I said they were bringing this guy back you know they um, they will go out to look for them and they will put them in chains and in handcuffs and bring them back it was like a reformatory and this 11 year old they they brought him back and I saw them bringing him out of the the, the, the van and the police there, and I'm saying, but that's an 11 year old child. Why are you treating him like that? And they said to me, Miss Valentine, his father is in jail, his mother is in jail, his uncles, they're all in jail, all the families in jail, and he's trying his best to get there. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's why he's in this reformatory school. That's what the family, family tree is all about. He says, so you don't feel sorry for them because they will come into this office and they will rob you and think nothing about it. Mm 